Well, hi there, thank you for joining me again for the study of First Peter. And if you want to grab your Bible or phone or iPad or whatever you want to look at, today we're going to be reading chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. And these few verses are all about attitude, having the right attitude. And I think for me, the key verse here is verse 15. Peter begins by saying, but, and he's saying, but this is how we should respond to what has gone before, about adversity, sufferings and persecutions, about fear and about living out and sharing and arguing our faith. Verse 15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Well, the word revere means to worship, to adore, to honour, and Peter is saying we should worship, adore, and honour Christ as Lord in our hearts. Three ways we can do that. The first is having an attitude to adversity. In verse 13 he says this, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. It is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Maybe Peter is again thinking of Jesus' words at the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, Blessed are you when you are persecuted, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And even if we do suffer, for we need to keep in mind that Christ is Lord over sufferings and adversity. God um, gives us the grace to get through them, but he also can use these things for our good and for his glory. Secondly, he speaks about having an attitude to fear. Verse 14, he says this, he says, do not fear their threats, do not be frightened. And here Peter is referring to Isaiah, this time to chapter 8, verse 12, and he's saying that in your hearts, Make Jesus Lord over your fears and your anxieties. And I guess there's three ways we can do this. St Paul says in 2 Corinthians that we can rebuke our fears. We take captive of our negative thoughts in the name of Jesus. We rebuke them. And then he goes on to say in Philippians that after we rebuke these things, we can replace them. Replace those thoughts with good thoughts. Whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is worthy, think on these things. And we rebuke, we replace, and then lastly we can remember that Jesus is sovereign over our adversity. That he's working his good, his pleasing, his perfect plan out despite our adversities and our fears. In your hearts revere Christ as Lord for your attitude to adversity and your attitude to fear. And then finally, he speaks about our attitude to our faith. In verse 15, he says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have, but do this with gentleness and do this with respect. So you and I have been saved into a living hope. That's what this series is really all about. It's a about a hope that brings life and brings freedom. It's about a hope that can never be taken away. It's a hope that lasts for all eternity. Our testimony of God's transforming love in our lives and the lives of others is powerful. It changes lives. Always be prepared to tell others about Jesus because your testimony has power. It has power to speak into hearts. And, you know, I know that People have disagreed with me about my faith. I'm sure there are people that don't get why you follow Jesus, but they can't disagree with your experience and your testimony. The way Jesus has transformed your life and my life, the way he's transformed the lives of millions of others throughout history, they can't refute that. And Peter says that we do this not with guilt or aggression or arrogance, but we're led by the Holy Spirit and we do this with great gentleness. And respect. I guess one of the things that his readers would have heard was this phrase, Jesus is Lord, which would have been quite political at that time. Peter's saying this isn't about overthrowing Caesar, it's not about causing division in marriages and society. This is about honouring an authority, it's about honouring 
and champion our family. It's about pointing to a different type of kingdom and a different type of rule from Caesar. It's about a different way of life. So what do I think Peter is saying in all of this? Someone once said, unless Jesus is Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord of all. Peter's saying we do this over our adversities, our fear, um, our, our faith. We submit every thought, every conversation, every desire to Jesus. We lay them at his feet. There's a scene in the Gospels where Jesus is right on top of his ministry. And he's healing sick and casting out demons. He's preaching the good news of the kingdom. He's unpacking the scriptures. And amazingly, at this point, many of his disciples decide to desert him. I find this really reassuring as a pastor. But when you teach about the Holy Spirit, you will convict. People will be challenged. People will be offended. And while these disciples are deserting Jesus, he says, the words I've, sp the words I've spoken to you are full of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gives life, but the flesh counts for nothing. And then he turns to the twelve and he says, guys, do you want to leave me too? And it's Peter, he's the one who stands up and he's the one who says, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Reminds me a bit of Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Because Peter has tasted something of Jesus that he knows however difficult the road is ahead. Nothing else is ever going to satisfy. There's nothing else that's ever going to come close to this relationship with Jesus. And it's not easy making Jesus Lord of every area of our lives. We see that in Peter's life because our flesh, our desires, our fears, our personalities, they long to be in control. But when you've truly encountered Jesus, not just in your head, but deep in your heart through the Holy Spirit, as Peter discovered, there's nothing else that's ever going to come close again. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we want to ask you now to be Lord of every area of our lives. Would you be Lord of our pain, our suffering, our adversities? Would you come and use these things for our good and for your glory? Would you be Lord of our fear? of our anxieties, would you come and bring your perfect peace right in the heart of the storms? And would you be Lord of our faith, that you would be the centre, the source, the centre, the summit, the, the one who sustains us, that everything about us would be about you. And we want to pray for those areas of our lives which we cling to, those things that get in the way of our relationship with you, that we would relinquish those things and that we would be totally surrendered to you. We want to pray for those areas of our life where we don't want to face and don't want to deal with. That again, we would bring those things and lay them at your feet. We give you permission to be Lord of every area of our lives because we know there's no way to find true peace and true satisfaction without you. And we ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me and with grace and peace be yours in abundance.